Okay, today I'm going to solve a comprehensive example that includes velocity potential, conservation of mass, pressure difference, two points, which can be calculated by the Euler's equation or the Bernoulli's equation. Okay, let's start. Consider the following 2D velocity potential that's given to me. For an incompressible flow, is the conservation of mass satisfied? B. What is the pressure difference between points A, 0, 0 and B, 1, comma 1? Okay. Let's start with part A. We have covered the equation that we need to check to see whether the conservation of mass is satisfied or not. Okay, the equation looks like this: del square of the velocity potential with respect to del x square plus del square velocity potential del y square plus del square phi del z square is it really equal to zero? Okay, the third one is zero because I don't have any z variance. Okay, let's evaluate del square phi del x square. So that will be del square del x square of the function itself, which is x square minus y square plus 3xy plus 5. And from here, this will be del del x of, let's take the first derivative of this, or rather partial of this, x square becomes 2x, y vanishes, 3xy becomes plus 3y, right? 5 vanishes. And if I take the derivative of this or partial of this, I'll get myself a number 2, right? So let's do the same thing for del square phi, del y square will be equal to del square, del y square of x square minus y square plus 3xy plus 5, right? And this will be del del y of, let's take the first partial with respect to y, this vanishes, this becomes minus 2y, this becomes plus 3x, and the 5 vanishes, and from here this you will get minus 2, right? The derivative of minus 2y plus 3x with respect to y is minus 2. So from here I will obtain 2 is del square phi del x square plus del square phi del y square plus del square phi del z square. Is it really equal to 0? Yeah, you can see obviously, yes, yes, conservation of mass is satisfied. That is the answer it's that I have. asking me the pressure difference between two points in the flow. Okay, in order to do that, my question to you is, I have two options, right? I can use the Euler's equation or I can use the Bernoulli's equation. My question to you is, I don't know whether this point A and point B are on a streamline or not. Can I simply go ahead and use the Bernoulli's equation? That's my question. Okay. So remember, one of the conditions for Bernoulli's equation to be used between any two points in the flow is that the flow needs to be irrotational. Okay. So in this particular question statement, I was given that the velocity potential is existing, right? Because I was given a function. So now, based on that, we discussed this when we were covering the velocity potential derivation and discussion video. Once I'm given the velocity potential, the flow is automatically irrotational. Okay? So then, yes, I should be able to use my Bernoulli's equation to find these the, between these two points A and B. The second approach is to use the Euler's equation. Okay? But if I plot this in an axis over here, so it's asking from between 0, 0, and let's say this is 1, let's say this is 1. So it's basically, it's asking me to go to this particular point, okay? So if I use Euler's equation, I don't have a Euler's equation that relates the pressure between these two points. I can only move in the x direction, y direction, or z direction, right? So what I do need to do, if I'm doing the Euler's equation, which I don't recommend for this, but I'm just pointing to your attention, is I need to go, for instance, in this path, okay? And what we'll obtain is I'm going to obtain a point, let's say, C over here, okay? So let's say A to B, right? So what I will do is I will go from A to C, and I'm going to use Euler's in X, and then I'm going to do C to B. So I have to do two-step process in here. And in, if, if I do that, now I have to go in the Euler's Y direction, right? Because if I go from C to B, I am traveling in the Y direction. Or another student 
may want to choose another uh, pad so this pad is reasonable as well so from a you can go up straight to this point y is equal to 1 x is equal to 0 and then you can go over here as well you will find the fi same answer but you can see this is a lot of mathematics i would like you to no notice that okay i will be taking the easier path out and i will use the bernoulli's equation in this particular problem okay first i have to find the velocities right i did not find it in this particular question so let's find it you, i look at my uh, you know formulas i have this formula given to me and from here as you can see del del x of x squared minus y squared plus 3xy plus 5 so from here i get my u to be 2x plus 3y right because x squared becomes 2x y squared doesn't have any x dependence 5 doesn't have any x dependence so from here i get to you 2x plus 3y okay note that i find it here up here as well okay and i'll do the same thing for the v that will be the del velocity potential del y and that will be del del y of the same function x squared minus y squared plus 3xy plus 5 and i will obtain this is not a function of y so i'm going to get minus 2y this is a function of y so i get myself plus 3x and this is not a function of y so this is my velocities as you see i get myself x and u and v which are the velocities in the x and y directions respectively now what i have to do is let's look at the question the question is asking from delta p okay um, it wasn't specific in terms of whether I should do PB minus PA or PA minus PB. So I'm just arbitrarily going to pick PB minus PA. So that will be P1 comma 1 minus P0 comma 0. Before proceeding, I need to find my velocities at point 1, 1 and point 0, 0. Because when you write the Bernoulli's equation, you will see that there's a velocity component there. So I have to know my velocities. Okay. So let's find first find that U0 comma 0 will be 2 times x is 0, y is 0, so I get myself 0. How about v? v is 0, 0. will also be minus 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0, that is 0. And from here, I will get v at my point of 0, 0 will be 0. u, 1, comma 1, will be 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1, which is 5, right? v, 1, comma 1, will be minus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 and that will be what 1 plus 1 right so over here then I need to find my v 1 comma 1 will be square root of 5 square plus 1 square root of it right and from here I'm gonna get square root of 26 I don't have to calculate the square root of 26 because as you will find out in the Bernoulli's equation I have v square so the square root will uh, vanish okay so then I will go at with my Bernoulli's equation. So basically this is how it looks like. PA divided by density plus VA squared over 2 plus GZA will be equal to PB over rho plus VB squared over 2 plus GZB. Okay? So as the question is asking me, PB minus PA, what did I say? I said PB minus PA, so let's do this. PB minus PA divided by the density will be equal to VA square minus VB square over 2 plus G times ZA minus ZB. Okay, now let's insert the values into the equation. We find VA a was uh, at 0, 0, so this is 0, right? And I find my ZB to be square root of 26. Then look at the last term, G times ZA minus ZB. So I have option over here, okay? If I redraw my, uh, you know, coordinate axis roughly over here, you will see that this is A and this is B. So you can imagine that the gravity is going down over here. So that's option A. Then, if you look at it, this ZA minus ZB will be minus 1, right? Because A is lower than B, right? Or, another student can see that, hey, I'm talking about Z. You only gave me X and Y, and gravity is perpendicular to this plate. So, what it means is that this, this coordinate axis that, that I draw is sitting on the table, 
okay, perpendicular to the gravity direction. That's fine as well. So this is up to you, okay? As long as the question is vague about this, you have the opportunity to pick whatever you want, okay? So, okay, then let's calculate this PB minus PA, okay? Will be equal to, this is going to be minus 13, right? I'll pick this one. The gravity will be 9.81, right? Times ZA minus ZB will be minus 1. And I need to multiply this whole thing by the density. Obviously, I had to give you the density over here. Let's assume that I'm going in an air, okay? And the density will be 1.23. So if I punch these numbers into my calculator, you will see that this PA minus PB will be right around 28 pascals. Obviously, it's negative for this particular case, okay? So this will be my answer.